This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. A couple of months back I made a video about moving from Canon and Fuji to Sony and uh, especially with portrait photography my photography has always been on Canon and I saw a lot of people jump on in the comments and say you've made a massive mistake your portraits are going to go south Sony has awful skin tones and I've done a few shoots with the Sony already and hadn't really noticed an issue but I thought maybe I'm being naive maybe I'm not looking closely enough and I thought maybe I can come up with some kind of test So I'm at my friend uh, Bayak's house, he's a great photographer, I'm going to link him down below, website and Instagram, definitely, definitely check him out, he's a great portrait photographer and he's kindly agreed to help us out because obviously I've got rid of my Canon now. So I've come over to Bayak's place, he's got a Canon 5D Mark III which uh, we're going to use to, to do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison and I'm going to use my uh, Sony a7 III and we're going to use the same lens on it so I've, what we've done is just use this it's called an MC11 adapter from Sigma and that just means we can adapt this very very simple Canon 50mm f1.4 so we're going to use the same settings which will be ISO 100 uh, 1 over 2 50th of a second shutter speed and f2.8 for everything no filters on front of the lenses same lens for both shots the only difference is going to be the sensor on the back and then kindly Radic has let us use his his uh, nice home studio so we're going to use this black background here this light nice little octobox uh, very very simple just one light setup and these great little Godox uh, AD600 lights and we're going to set same power same settings uh, same lens same subject same background the only difference is going to be the sensor on the back So I brought the images into Photoshop and just so you know, all I've done with these images before this is brought them into Capture One. I shot the first image with each person with a grey card and I've just colour picked the white balance to make sure it's exactly correct on the grey card. Both cameras were set to flash white balance but every camera is slightly different, every flash is slightly different. So just to make 100% sure the colours are uh, bang in the middle where they should be on that white balance, I, I used that grey card for the first shot. I've kicked them out of Capture One into Photoshop now and these are the first of the the three images. These are the Canon shots. Again, they've been shot with uh, the 5D Mark III. Same settings between both cameras and with the 50mm, the Canon 50mm f1.4. And then these are the three Sony shots. And I think you can see straight away there is quite a big difference. Again, same lens on this camera. I use the Canon 50mm f1.4 adapted. So it's just the sensor that's different. It's the same light, same setup and there is definitely quite a difference. I assumed doing this test actually that there wouldn't be that much of a difference but I think you can see there's definitely a massive difference between them. So let's put them side by side and I think you can see straight away what a massive difference there is between those two sensors. Um, the Canon, let's state the obvious, is a lot warmer um, but I was quite surprised because in my head I've always, and having shot Canon for years, I assumed it was shifting more towards the red and even the magentas but looking at it there's almost a yellow color cast through the whole image even into the shadows um, that sort of appears on the Canon sensor so it definitely is warmer but it's warmer towards the yellow and if I'm being unkind there's even sort of hints of it shifting to green and pushing a little too far to green but a much warmer skin tone on the Canon and the Sony is a much cooler skin tone. Um, it's almost even a little cyan in some of those highlights if, if I'm being unkind to the Sony and you can see it's definitely shifting in more with the pinks and the magentas in the Sony as well. So much cooler, more magenta on the Sony, much warmer yellow 
on the um, on the Canon. If we jump to the next one, and you'll you'll see I've deliberately um, shot with three different people who are uh, different ethnicities, so we can see what this does to different skin types. Um, again, exactly the same sort of thing though. We're looking at the Canon has definitely got a much more yellow shift across the whole image, which gives you that, that warm, almost glowing skin tone on the Canon, which I think is what a lot of people love and why they sort of go with the Canon. And the Sony, again, a lot cooler um, and a lot more sort of uh, pinky magenta in some of those shifts as well. And then let's look at the last one. Um, and this is a good one to illustrate this point I think if you look at the forehead on both of these images you can see that the Canon is a lot more forgiving uh, of skin detail it almost and I don't know why this happens I'm not technical enough to understand why this happens um, but it looks like the way that Canon treats the yellows and oranges and reds in the skin tone it's got a very very smooth roll off so it almost um, so sort of smooths the skin out for you in some senses and you'll hear people say this they'll say that you know the Canon skin tones are beautiful because the roll-off is lovely um, and I've heard people sort of criticize the Sony saying that Sony gives you blotchy skin tones but I'm not sure especially if you look in areas like this compare these two areas here to each other I'm not sure blotchy is the right word I can definitely see that there's more skin detail on the Sony um, and personally, and I mean, I've shot with Canon for years, but personally, I'm really enjoying the fact that there is a lot of skin detail to play with because the way that I shoot, I don't necessarily want to throw skin detail away. In fact, I might want to accentuate it like I did uh, last year with those mentor portraits of um, older men in my life who sort of uh, been mentors to me. And I, I didn't want to hide their age. In fact, I wanted to, to feature it almost. Um, so if you are somebody who wants to do beauty portraits or fashion portraits and you want to make your retouch a lot easier, the Canon is probably the way you want to go because it's, it's doing some of that work for you beforehand. Personally, the sort of portrait photographer I am, I want all this detail and I want to choose to lose it or keep it and, I, and I'm quite enjoying um, how much I have to use. But it does mean that my retouch is going to be more involved and is going to take me longer. So let's talk about correcting skin tone because sometimes you're gonna take a portrait and the skin tone just doesn't look very natural or it doesn't look quite right. Um, so there's a lot of very technical ways you can work this out. You can go on and read very complicated formulas for skin tones and download color palettes and charts and gradient maps and all that stuff is great to get into if you have the time. But today I'm gonna to give you a very, very simple formula for how you can roughly check if the skin tone is where it should be regardless of ethnicity. So let's have a look. We've got our C, our M, our Y and our K values. That's our cyan, magenta, yellows and blacks. We're not gonna worry about black. It's not really a color, it's more of a tonal range and uh, we can ignore it for the, for the sake of skin tone. Cyan is going to be a number, an amount, a percentage and this will make sense in a second. Magenta is gonna be cyan times two. So magenta is gonna be double the value of cyan and yellow is going to be magenta times by 1.25. So yellow is going to be one and a quarter the value of magenta. And if we get that mix between our cyans, our magentas and our yellows, our skin tone should be round about where it needs to be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this background layer. And I'm gonna come up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And basically what I'm doing is just trying to average even out the skin tones. If I didn't do this, and I'm trying to pick values in different places on the skin. You can see it's hugely different from highlights to shadows and all the detail in between. So this just kind of averages everything out a little bit. And now if I let my mouse hover over the image and you watch over here in this info panel, by the way, your info panel, if you don't know where it is, just get a window, come down here, make sure you've got info panel ticked and it'll appear on the right hand side. But watch this panel here. As I hover over different parts of the image, you can see those values are changing. You've got your RGB values and this is where we're gonna live for now as our CMYK values. So you can see if I hover over here on the forehead, somewhere where there's good tonal value, we've got 27 cyan, um, 67 for magenta, and yellow is 81% at the moment. So remember we need that formula to work for us. So 27, uh, let's have a little look around just in case things change drastically. No, we look like it looks pretty constant from there. So let's go, all right, 26, 60, 73. And again, because it changes in about, we're looking for an average just to get close to this, making sure that those balances are fairly close. And to be honest, we're pretty close to good skin tone with this. Um, 26, 60, 
that probably means that we've got a little too much magenta in, so we need to pull it back. 26, we should be around 52. So let's start there, and we're gonna come here, we're gonna create, there's a few different ways to do this, but let's do it with curves. I'm going to select my curves layer. And just to explain to you, you see me do contrast videos, that's pulling in global contrast. We're now going to start to use channels here. So if I go to my red channel, if I pull up on the curve, I'm going to be introducing red. If I pull down, I'm going to be introducing the opposite color, which is cyan. If I go to my green channel, if I push up on the greens, I'm going to be introducing green. If I pull down, I'm introducing the opposite, which is magenta. If I come down here to blue, if I push up on the blue channel, I introduce blue. If I pull down, I introduce its opposite, which is yellow. So here, I know that I want to bring down my magenta, which actually means I want to go to my green channel and I want to push in a bit more green. I want to balance that magenta out. So if I grab this little hand tool here and I click round about where I was selecting, it's going to create a point for me on my curve. And I'm just going to push this up slightly, just to introduce a little bit of green and pull out a touch of that magenta. And if I come back and check, uh, yep, that's good. You can see now it's got a, uh, a hyphen between those two numbers. That's before and after. So you can see I brought it down a little bit, uh, but I want to do a little bit more. It's gone from 69 to 66. If I come back now, I'm down to 55. So 27 to 55 is a pretty good mix. So now I've got my cyan and my magenta pretty much double. So that's around where I want to be. If I look now, I want to now make my yellow 1.25 or one and a quarter my magenta. And because my math is terrible, let's just double check this. So magenta is 55 there. Let's go to my calculator. 55 times by 1.25 is going to give me 68.75. Okay, so 68, 69, that's where I need to be. So I can see I've got way too much yellow in the image and we know that from having looked at it earlier and seen that yellow color cast. So what I'm gonna to do to correct for that yellow is actually come down to my blue channel Again, I'm going to select my little hand tool, click over in the same sort of area, and I'm going to grab that point and I'm going to introduce blue because what that's going to do is take some of that yellow out and balance it a little bit. Now, if I come over back here, I am looking fairly good. 28 to 56, 56, I can push it a little bit further. We're at 78 to 75 has been the jump so far. We're down to 73. Let's push it a little bit more so we get closer to those early 70s, high 60s and that looks like a better skin tone mix to me now. So if I turn off my blurred layer underneath and I turn off my curves layer, you can see I've gone from what was quite a yellowy mix and I've just with those quick corrections and curves, I've now brought in a, a better mix which feels certainly to my eye and using that formula looks like a more natural skin tone. Let's do the same thing once more and we're going to use this image out of the Sony just to show you a totally different skin tone. You can see this skin tone is also off, it's, it's cooler, it's bluer, so we do need to do a little bit of work with it. And I'm going to move a lot faster this time. So let's uh, duplicate our background layer. Let's come up here to filter. We'll use the same blur we did before. That looks pretty good. And as we're hovering over our different areas here, we've got 13 for our cyan and then our magenta and we said that this looked a bit pinker so this makes sense is 37 and our yellow is 41 percent i'm actually going to move it over a little bit over here because it's quite bright in there and i want to make sure there's a lot of color so 15 38 and 42 so 15 i should be about 30 on my magenta not 38 so let's come here and grab another curves layer Let's select, because I want to play with my magenta value, I'm actually gonna to go to my green channel, remember? Pushing in green takes out magenta. If I pull it down, I'm gonna introduce more magenta. Grab my hand tool and click over in this area I was working on. And now I want to bring out some magenta, which means I'm going to push up on my green values here and introduce some green into that image. I am I pushed it too far. So now, because what's happening is as I'm introducing green, I'm also messing with that cyan value. I have to be careful that I'm balancing the two out. So 17 to 27, I pushed it too far. If I pull it back a little bit, I should be roughly where I need to be. And that looks like 13 to 27, that's good. So 13, double it would be 26. I'm roughly in the area I need to be. Okay, now to take care of my yellows, I'm gonna cheat again. So my magenta value is 27. Let's go to my calculator. If I take 27 times by 1.25, I know I need to be roughly 33, 34, 35, somewhere around there for my yellow values. And at the moment, I'm close to that. 
it's slightly over so I want to pull a little bit of yellow out of the image I'm at 38 at the moment so if I come down to my blue channel that's going to be what affects my yellows if I push in blue I'm going to take out yellow if I pull down I'd introduce more yellow so again grabbing my little hand tool selecting somewhere around where I need to be I'm going to push in a bit of blue to correct some of that yellow that's been introduced if I hover over now that's looking better I want it to be about 30 it's 3, 32, 33, 31. That's looking like a pretty decent mix. So if I take this uh, blurred layer off now, if I turn off that curves layer, that's what it was before. You can see that pinky cast and those cooler tones. But because I've corrected those skin tones now, if I add that curves layer on top, you can see that looks like a slightly more natural skin tone and it's got me closer to what I need to be. Again, if you wanted to check, you could just turn on that blur layer underneath, run your eyedropper around and have a look. Are you roughly within those ratios of uh, cyan and then magenta being double cyan and your yellow being one and a quarter? of your magenta value. And that looks like a more natural skin tone. I'll be honest with you, this video has taken a huge left turn. Initially, I was gonna make a video talking about the fact that yes, I've moved to Sony because it's the right tool, especially for video, but that I was sad that I'd lost those beautiful Canon skin tones. And I was gonna teach you in Photoshop how to get from a Sony image to a Canon skin tone in just a few moves and curves. But as I've looked at them side by side, I can't honestly do that anymore because it's not really how I feel about it. I think that these both are great starting points. And I even remember when I used to shoot on my Canon and sort of talk about how I love Canon for the skin tone straight out of camera, I'd still then bring it into Lightroom and I'd edit it. I would color tone it in Photoshop. And by the time I got to the end of it, the colors weren't really Canon colors anymore. They were mine anyway. I, I don't actually understand the obsession with straight out of camera with people online because everyone's saying, you know, you've got to get that camera with those beautiful colors straight out of camera, but very few of us are posting images straight out of camera. We're not shooting and just posting a raw file. We're all editing to some degree. Some of us are doing it custom. Some are throwing on presets, but either way, when we talk about straight out of camera, we can only really talk about it in terms of a starting point to build our edit on. This is one of the edits I came up with from this shoot. And you can see that it's neither of the colors of the other two. It is, um, it's got my color mix in it. It's, it's gone, I've gone to work on it and produced an image which feels like the sort of work that I do. And to be honest, I could have got here with either of these other two images. Personally, I got here with the Sony. And I'm gonna give you two sides of the same coin here. The reason that I'm enjoying editing with the Sony a lot more than I thought even after this comparison is because this to me, for my style of editing where I do want to fine tune color toning myself and I don't mind going to town and doing all the retouching myself so that extra detail or blotchiness or whatever you want to put it is information that I can work with and choose to lose or use at the end of the day. I've enjoyed this as a very neutral starting point to be able to edit from. Where I think you should be choosing Canon is if you love this kind of warmer skin tone straight out of camera and you don't want to edit as much and also you're not really much of a retoucher. You don't want to go in a retouch because it's a pain and you want to take that image, just make little tweaks in Lightroom maybe and throw it out. Canon is definitely the choice for you if you like that look. I will admit that the Sony is definitely a cooler look which isn't necessarily where you want to be with your skin tones. Although it's not unpleasing and I kind of feel like maybe it's a more realistic look under those studio lights. But the Canon definitely has a warmth to it that a lot of people love. With either of these images, if we go to work on them, a great starting point. So maybe our obsession about which camera has beautiful images straight out the box is not as important as we think it is. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they really are a fantastic option. I used them long before they were a sponsor on this channel. In fact, if anyone said to me, I need a website, I used to go into my little Squarespace speech because I love the fact that even though I'm a web idiot, I don't know how to code and I'm not a designer at all, I was able to go onto Squarespace and just dragging and dropping in elements like titling and text and my logos and putting in galleries of images and setting up a blog and now even a store has been super easy to do. They've got brilliant customer service if anything goes wrong and their design and their templates really makes your images sing. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.